Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and today we're going to be talking about JS doc syntax in SvelteKit. This is something you may have been seeing throughout SvelteKit sites, and in fact, I see this question all the time. Now, I do want to do a post-mortem on the whole SvelteKit API changes that have happened recently. Um, if you caught any of my live streams, you'll know that we've recently refactored our entire site using the new API changes, and I really like them um, in practice, especially. I I, I, I was not like 100% sold, but I was pretty sold based on the, um, the GitHub issues and the discussions about it. But after actually using it, uh, I am thoroughly convinced. So uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that um, as I spend some more time with them and really can feel uh, like I, I know everything about them. But we did refactor, you know, like 60 some files, so to say, I and mean, there were more files than that that were changed, but we had to manually touch like 60 some files. And I think I got a good handle on it. But you know what? I was on the Svelte Reddit today and I saw this question here. It says, I find this syntax confusing. T at type import types page load server. Does this somehow relate to the app.d.ts file? I quite find it quite difficult to decipher when you're just learning. And this is not an uncommon sentiment. I actually have seen this exact same comment many times and people see these weird at type comments inside of SvelteKit and they say, what is this? Is this some sort of like special syntax and what is this doing? And so I thought it would be important to take some time and explain maybe what this is, what this is about, and why these pop up in SvelteKit. Now, at a, a high level view of this thing is all this is, is it's TypeScript type checking without using TypeScript files. And this is using JS doc syntax. Now, some of the comments in that Reddit thread were saying like, why why not just use TypeScript? Why use JS doc syntax for this? Especially if TypeScript is so popular. And the answer, in my opinion, is, is that this allows uh, the SvelteKit documentation and the SvelteKit files that are generated, all of those things, it allows them to be in just JavaScript, meaning that people who don't know TypeScript can still easily parse and read them without having to decipher all the weird type stuff and the weird syntax that comes along with TypeScript. But at the same time, you do get the benefits of type checking, which are well worth it. And so this is probably why these comments are littered throughout the SvelteKit code and the documentation. It's really to give you the benefits of TypeScript without having to learn TypeScript. And if you don't want to write them and you don't want that type checking, then you don't need them. But if you do, they're there. And I think that's handy. So let's talk a little bit about JS doc. Uh, JS doc has existed for a very long time. And while all of this may seem confusing, because you can see that there's a ton of things, you can see the copyrights even started in 2011. So JS doc has been around for a long time as a way to document your JavaScript. And that was the primary use case for JS doc for a long time, for a very long time. It was just simply to document your code in a way. Um, let's see if we can see some basic, yes. So it's a simple documentation, it's a description, and then you can uh, describe your code, you can describe the params, what type they are. And this is kind of like a proto TypeScript type of deal where you're describing the code in a way, the same kind of way you do with TypeScript but it wasn't necessarily used for type checking. What it was used for was generating your documentation and lots of documentation for code libraries in the past for a long time have just utilized JS doc to then uh, spit out some markdown or your documentation and actually have it write your docs for you, which was a really nice thing to do for a very long time. Now, because of that, many people are very experienced in JS doc where newer developers might not have that same experience. You might not have used JS doc before in the past, or you might not have even encountered it. However, this has been an extremely common way to document open source projects for a very long time. So because of that, many projects choose to use JS doc now as a way to type their code as well, because oftentimes the JS doc code was already written into the components. So instead of rewriting everything into TypeScript, they can just modify or use their JS doc to get the code typing. 
Now, how does this all relate to TypeScript? Well, if you head to TypeScript's own website and then you head to the handbook, one of the topics in the handbook is JavaScript. And then you can see JS projects utilizing TypeScript. The type system in TypeScript has a different strictness based on the code base. So you can incremental, incrementally type your code using the JS doc syntax, or you can use TS check, um, TypeScript code, which is .ts files or lang typescript in svelte kit, or you can use typescript with script enabled. Now I'm going to tell you straight up, some people aren't going to like the JS doc syntax for typescript, which is why we have lang ts inside of svelte kit. That's what I use. That's what a lot of people use. But even if you aren't familiar with it, there's a huge amount of people out there who have been using JS doc syntax for a long time. And it's really nice and easy for a number of reasons. One, we don't need to have a special language version for the file. In fact, because they're just comments, you don't need to compile the code in any sort of way. You write JS doc syntax in just JS files, meaning you don't have to have any sort of special compilation step to have the browser understand code that's typed with JS doc. That's a, that's a big plus. And you can see that like once you understand the syntax, it makes, it makes perfectly good sense, right? At type number, right? You can read that and kind of know what it does. Now that doesn't mean you have to write JS doc syntax just because felt does. I don't personally, I write TypeScript code. I prefer the TypeScript syntax, but it also doesn't mean that this syntax is bad or weird or not valid. Um, because I, I think this is a totally valid, that has a lot of valid use cases for this. In fact, um, as one thing that I noticed when working in the TypeScript code, it's really easy to type a whole function, its parameters and its return value with one import line of a JS doc style TypeScript code. But with, <laughs> with TypeScript itself, you have to assign that function to a variable and type the variable as the function to get that same functionality, meaning that you had to augment your JavaScript code just to fit your types rather than with this, you don't even have to augment, you just throw in a comment. So definitely something to think about. Um, so you can paw through this type checking JavaScript files, and then there's a whole JS doc reference and how it relates to TypeScript within the TypeScript syntax. But I just wanted to make this video to say, hey, this is what that weird bit of code is that you'll see sprinkled throughout your TypeScript code or sprinkled throughout your Svelte code, and this is why it exists. Not only that, this is why it's valid and a valid approach to doing types. And it's not only that, it's something that the TypeScript docs reference themselves. So if you want to learn more about type checking via JS doc, I highly recommend reading, at least pawing through this JS doc reference. I think the best way to learn it is just to look at projects like Svelte Kit that are using it, or just try to use it in that sort of way as well. But once you know what it is, you can either choose to delete it, ignore it, or work in TypeScript as you are used to without these JS doc comment styles as I do myself personally. So this is what JS doc TypeScript checking is. This is why it exists in SvelteKit, and this is why it might be a cool idea. In fact, you might even want to switch to doing it this way yourself because there's a number of benefits. So thanks so much for watching. As always, this is Scott with the Level Up Tutorials. I'm gonna keep this one short and sweet because we did have four hours plus of uh, Svelte streaming this week already. And if you wanna check that out, they're available as full videos on this channel below. You can watch me paw through this giant migration of Level Up Tutorials. and even and check out some of the new site while you're at it because we talk through a lot of cool stuff and as we go i take a lot of question and answers on svelte and svelte kit anyways also the latest episode of syntax is out today with rich harris as our guest and we talk all about uh, many different things including inspirations for svelte its templating system we talk about um, svelte kit the potential release timing of svelte kit we talk about svelte 4 <laughs> which uh, isn't like on the horizon or anything, but we, we just kind of talk about it. So as always, this is Scott. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week for Weekly Svelte.